you go in there and go on an angle. Just keep softening that hair, make it less and less and less. All right, so what we did was gave her a really nice straight, straight blunt line. And I razored her. It's so amazing how soft a razor makes hair. Now the other way to also do something if you wanted to cut up, these are the scissors that are great. You're gonna take those ends Oh, wait. You're going to take those ends and you can go to the side and soften that hair even more. So it's a lot more flexible. Otherwise, if you want a real rigid line, straight scissors and a straight line, what I did just before. And you're going to do it until you see it really softening up. You go in there and go on an angle. Just keep softening that hair, make it less and less and less. It will take the strong line away. If you want it to have a little bit more texture, you bring it up higher. And I want to show you too, see how to get really PC on that bottom. Some people love it PC. Now look at the difference of here and then look at the difference of here. See how thick it is? So remember, if you want to soften it, you're just going to get those scissors and you're going to cut into it. You could even like see how that hair, you could even go up a little higher too if you need to bring some out, some bulk. This is like the new hottest trend. I feel like all these like real soft PC ends, right? So now I'm just gonna do it in the back. You could take it up, go a little higher. I mean, could you do it this way? You could, you could, but I feel like you see it more. So even if you needed to take an extra bulk out and then do it, cause you, you really won't see where that's coming from. Cause this mannequin's got definitely like pretty lot of hair. Take it out. I'll just go here, do it again. And if she needs more like right back here, I feel like she still needs more. Now look at how more soft that is becoming. It's gonna be nice and wispy. These are the best scissors to do it with though. You see how nice and wispy it's really become? Right, you take, you get rid of that strong line. Cause some people like it to be more tapered in and they don't like the bell look. So it all depends on what you want, what somebody would look good with. If they got super bulky, thick hair, most of the time they want it finer. And this is the best way to do it, to make it finer. All right, guys. I hope you like all these tips and tricks that I'm doing for you on this one mannequin head. It's pretty cool, right? All right, so pick one. Which one do you want? a great icebreaker.
This is who makes them. Stress management. These are great to be an icebreaker. And then also ask yourself the questions. So if you could answer them, then you could have your team answer them. Do you get as much sleep as you need? I don't because I don't need a lot of sleep. So sometimes I just learn to relax and I just learn to think, okay, I need a little more sleep because maybe I had five or six hours. They say you need eight, but you know, Einstein only had five or six hours a night too and he was fine. I wake up early. I love to go to bed late because I like to finish my projects or finish what I'm doing. So do I get as much sleep as I need? I feel like I do because I'm not super tired I have so much energy so I guess it depends on how much energy you have if you had only one day left to live what would you do if I had one day left to live that's a good one I'd want to have the biggest celebration with all of my family like the biggest wedding of all time of my death I would have a beautiful celebration as if it was a wedding because you know what when I die it's gonna be my real life right because I know that I'm going to eternity and so I would celebrate that with all my heart mind soul and strength and have everybody that I love be there especially my dogs all dogs would be included and allowed to go to it wouldn't just be people and kids and all kids could go too because I love kids so that would be my one thing that I would do okay if you had yeah one day okay for how long can you comfortably unplug? All right, so I would say for a good three hours, comfortably unplug for a good three to four hours, depending on what I'm doing, but I could unplug for sure. Do I want to? Probably not, because sometimes being plugged in is definitely an addiction, right? Whether I'm doing my emails or I'm like looking, putting, posting stuff on my Instagram, or my Facebook or my YouTube. So it's good to unplug and to just get away from your phone. What most relaxes you? A glass of wine, relax wine, a bath, oh, a bath with the salt water, um, not the salt water, the Epsom salt. Oh, it's so good. I love that. And then to have my books in there that I can read, I could just quiet my mind down and meditate and relax and just be so thankful for all the things that I do have. It's really where my genius mind comes from is in my bath time. So that's what I would love to do the most because that would re relax me the most. What work task <clears throat> would you most like to avoid? Um, confronting people. Who likes confronting people? It's called, there's a book called um, Some Kind of Conversations, like, like hard conversations. And I like this. I heard um, Paul Martinelli says, have the sweaty palm conversation, right? It's like you have to learn to have the sweaty palm conversation, but it's not comfortable. So that's what I don't like is to confront and uh, to keep people on track. It's good, but I don't like to do it. I do do it. All right, which urgent tasks most distract you from important ones? Okay, which urgent tasks most distract you from important ones? My granddaughter. She is definitely by far my precious little distraction because I love her so much and I just have so much fun with her that I really um, put other things aside that could be very important. So as soon as she goes, I do them. But I would rather spend time with her and not do them because she means more to me than the project does. So that's that. And then what most stresses you out? Bad energy people stress me out. If I'm around somebody that is toxic or bad or negative, um, a bully, I don't like bullies. I don't like any kind of bad energy around me. When people are victims, I don't like that, or villains or ego, egotistical, definitely don't like that. So that would be something that would stress me out. And what else would stress me out? Um, I don't really get stressed out a lot because I feel like I learn to deal, feel, and heal. So if something's making me feel uncomfortable, I deal with it right away so that I'm not uncomfortable anymore. So it takes a lot, you know, but, and, and even stressful people, I don't keep them in my life long at all. I really disconnect and I just don't connect to them again. 
and I invite them to go with another group of people or friends or whatever or I just don't really answer back or call back you know you can put boundaries down and that's the best part if you have healthy boundaries you're in a good place healthy boundaries are good but people hate healthy boundaries because they want to keep you toxic and you're saying unacceptable I'm putting a boundary down no you can't treat me that way no you can't speak to me that way unacceptable so it's good to learn how not to be stressed out you have to learn are you do you have enough boundaries and if you are stressed out think about what you need to do so that you don't become stressed out so anyway this is a great little ball and it's a great little icebreaker if you have a salon meeting or any kind of meeting for work or with friends it's just great to break the ice and get to know each other a little bit better this is coach Kimmy have a great day